enceinte. What's going on, guys? How you been, Shui? I've been great. How you, so I do not know if this is officially, let me see, 8, 9, 10. If this would be officially episode 11, because I did film another episode prior to this, but I use a different platform. And if that those files look like complete crap, I probably might even post them. So this was probably episode 10 and a half. So well, how you I'm been, excited how, to be back. How you been? How's everything? First of all, she's not an amateur anymore, guys. Last time we had her on, she was an amateur. Now she's a fucking pro. It was actually around what? Last year we did it around like April when I was trying to get my pro card last year. Yeah, no, you gotta you gotta definitely tell me about that. But hold up real quick, hold up, hold up. <laughs> oh shit, it fucking got in my face. <laughs> Sunglasses Anyways, off. Sunglasses off. Yes. But tell me, so how, how has your trip been? Like this whole journey that you've been competing for a while and your dreams finally came true? Honestly, it's still, it, this sounds nuts, but it still isn't sunk in at all. Like people keep congratulating me and everything like that. And I'm like, wait, what? For what? And they're like, wait, you got your pro card. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> It's crazy. It's like I spent, what, six years trying to get it? Or, I mean, not necessarily trying to get it. I just, I love bodybuilding, but six years from when I started is where I finally got it. I mean, you've been at it for a long time. I mean, I feel like, look, at the end of the day, maybe it might not feel in the beginning that you're after it, but it's like something within you is like knows that you're you're definitely after it. It's, it's when your oh, okay. body starts getting more serious and you start kind of, I don't want to say you start kind of getting fed up, but it's more like when you know your body's there, I'm like, listen, I'm fucking giving it my all. And then you don't get it. And then like, no, like I'm really fucking doing this. And you really go crazy for, for that last year before you get your, your pro card without knowing you finally have it. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different mindset from like, yeah, if I get my pro card, then cool versus I'm definitely getting my pro card now and you're going after it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I will say off of what you just said. So I feel like the first two years I started competing, it was just for fun. I was jaded, knew nothing about it. Didn't know even like anything about reverse diets. Like I was starting from literally the bottom. Mm. And then I feel like when I started working with my coach now, Justin Randall, that third year into bodybuilding that I was like, oh shit, like I can elevate like you said, myself to a different level. I could take my body to a different level. And it's not that I didn't take bodybuilding seriously before, but that's, I feel like that's when it clicked and I'm like, I want to get my pro card. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to work my ass off. I want to grow. I want to get fat in order to grow in order to get my pro card. Listen, me and Shrey talk all the time about food. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. But I know her favorite thing ever. If, if I did not forget her favorite thing ever is fucking French fries. Some salty wow. ass French fries. Steak so and fries is so random. Life. I mean, listen. For for me, uh, my go to burger and fries. You can never beat a burger and fries ever. No. Ever. No, but like you put a cookie in front of me, or you put any kind of like dessert, donut, maybe a muffin. A muffin I might. Yeah. Choose, but a good steak and fries, and I'm the happiest person in the world. She's she's not like. All these other fucking competitors. We're, we're over here. We're over here. We're fucking. I mean, you made that whole platter for me. Remember, I, we're, it's a, it's a diabetes plate. Oh my god, the slutty brownies. Yeah. Yeah, you know exactly. So, so to take it back real quick, uh, for people that don't really know Shway, um, you are a hairstylist. Yep, a hairdresser, okay. makeup artist, and barber. Okay. Now, what um, what got you to convert? Um, well, you're still doing it, but what got what got a hairstylist? um like you and and your type of expertise to kind of get into the whole bodybuilding culture um i feel like so i've been doing hair for god almost 20 years like uh. probably like 18 and a half years 
And when I was working at one of my old salons, there was a girl that worked there that she jacked and everything like that had just started. So her and I started talking mm. and I had seen bodybuilding start to become a little more popular because of Instagram becoming more popular. So, and I've always worked out my whole life. So I kind of talked to her and that's when I got the ball rolling where I talked to my first coach who was Guy Del Corso and I got that introduction into the world and it just kind of kept snowballing from there. Okay. And I have to say, though, with my job and my hours, it may be a little stressful at times because you're constantly on your feet when it comes to prepping. I got pretty damn lucky. I don't sit at a desk all day. I'm always walking around. I'm getting my steps in. <clears throat> and because I kind of am my own boss in a way of my chair, I can finagle my hours to still accommodate my bosses and my clients, but also put myself first during prep. Okay. Yeah. Now, how are you able to get all your specific meals around your timing? I make it a priority for me to eat. Because also at the same time, like, I'm not a robot. So even if I wasn't prepping, I deserve those 10, 15 minutes in between clients in order to eat. And, I mean, let's be real. I eat like I'm in prison. It's gone in two (laughs) seconds. So, like, my client can literally be walking up the stairs as, like, someone's kind of ushering them up there and my meals already probably have digested yikes so i just make it work we 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 eat our meals sometimes look like it's so little (laughs) and especially the the amount of like the bowls that we get so it's like to to normal people it's like yo you're only gonna eat that i'm like well we eat like this and like six more meals yeah you know it's not your average consumer in a sense no i I even went to a dinner last night for my best friend. Uh, she's getting married soon. Mm. And we were all talking and somehow the, the topic of food came up. And I'm like, yeah, I eat six times a day. And they were like, they all like put their hands on the table and swung their head around at me and was like, what? I was like, yeah. And they're like, wait, how do you eat that? I'm like, well, it's not six gigantic meals. Yeah, no, that's different. That's different. Imagine having like six giant cheat meals. I wouldn't be able to see food anymore. I would disgusted. probably, yeah. I would feel disgusting and I'd probably want to vomit every day. Yeah, and then and then you start going into like that, like I'm fed up with food type thing. And I don't want, you don't want to get to that point. No. If, if you have to kind of feel disgusted, you, you should feel super excited for normal food. If you yeah. have to feel disgusted for normal food, then you're going way over your, your boundaries of like your dieting or anything like that. Oh, agreed. I mean, the only time that I ever feel like I'm totally in that kind of position is like the first three weeks before prep because mm. that's when justin will up my food he'll up my fats and it's to the point where i'll be eating and i'll start to get nauseous and it's not even junk it's my legit meals gotcha gotcha yeah so, uh, so how how to how do you do you get a lot of excitement for what you do in your normal life as well compared to like how you do with bodybuilding or it's like you kind of use bodybuilding as a way to kind of escape your normal life you know, I love both for different reasons. Okay. Um, I love bodybuilding because it's like I love I love working out in general. I personally love the whole community of it. I've never had a bad experience when it comes to that, and it breaks my heart to hear when people do. Mm. Um, and I love so both. I feel like push me, and they push me to want to be better. Okay. So in that instance, the two kind of collide together. But like with hairdressing, like. I let to let out my passion and I'm creative and I love helping people to feel better. And then with bodybuilding, it's like, I can push myself and see like, okay, I'm here. Now I want to go up here. I always want to strive to be better. Yeah, I mean, and that yeah. makes your normal life better as well. Right. Cause you take your oh my life God, a lot yeah. more serious. Oh yeah. Now, um, now that you're a pro, first of all, first of all, how, how did it feel to finally type in? on your phone or your keyboard or whatever and go to bio <laughs> and then put your name next to your name. I have to be pro. I mean, if you couldn't tell with the giant smile on my face, it felt absolutely incredible. Surreal, but incredible. And you're like, finally, I can fucking put these four letters. I have to be space pro. Absolutely. Right, like, right next to my name. Just like everybody else. Just like everybody else. <laughs> like finally I could do that. And I earned that shit. Yeah, listen, we've had convos. Uh, it's, I mean, it's tough. It's not, 
And then, look, it, it, this is the thing I always tell people too. If you go in a show that's a hard show and win your card, it just feels even more. You didn't do, you did a fucking universe, right? Yep. You didn't do a normal fucking show in the middle of nowhere. You did a pro show in here, one of the hardest one universe. Where oh my God, yeah. Where there's a ton, a ton of competitors. It, it was great. I mean, talking backstage with some of the girls, some of them uh, flew there from LA, Michigan. Like I didn't realize, even last year, I didn't realize so many people travel from so yeah. many different states. Some girl was from Mexico. Yeah, listen, I believe, there. I believe yeah. it. I believe it. I tell you all the time. Opportunities like that, you're gonna have people all the way from across the world sometimes. Oh yeah. That they they happen maybe to be here and that was their plan. So let me go visit family and at the same time. Oh, where are you from? Fucking Russia. Or, or where? like, what the fuck? So it's like, you, yeah. you never know. You never know who you're going to meet. So it's like, you know, it's it's like Russian roulette in a sense. You never know who's going to be there. But the fact that the fact that you won a, your pro card on, on a, such a such a big show like that, it just feels even more exciting to you that you ended up earning that card. Oh, yeah. Different feeling. Especially after the prep that I went through. Yeah, no, I felt like you were prepping forever. <laughs> Uh, it felt like that. I felt. I mean, you were happy that off season was finally here. And you're like, oh, finally, <laughs> finally. It did. It felt like a very long time. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it, but there was a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. <laughs> no, I bet. I bet. Let me see if I can click on something here. Okay, can you see the screen? Uh, yeah. How did you feel here? Um, oh my God, I'm getting the chills actually like looking at that. Um, it may sound really weird. I love watching, rewatching the video to kind of affirm like it happened, but it was. Look at you right there. Unbelievable. Like I didn't even, it didn't even hit me. Actually, I can say this. I feel like I almost blacked out at one point. <laughs> yeah, you're but, like crazy there. Thank you. It didn't hit me even when they said the other girl got second place still didn't hit me and i think that's why i swung around and like covered my mouth like holy shit this happened that's fucking nuts man to see something like that also in third view it's you get to it's a different experience oh yeah my girlfriend so many people, she, you know? what there were so many people also like just you know um chanting and it just you know you're, you're getting all those reactions from everybody like you know good luck or anything like that and the fact that for you to stand there, oh, and that famous shot from Will Women, come on, man. Oh. Like, that's all memories. Memories. I literally went up to him the next day and I was like, I just want to personally thank you. I was like, you have no idea who I am. And you didn't have to take that picture, but you captured something that's going to mean something to me for the rest of my life. That's amazing, man. That's yeah. So cool. There you go, little dinosaur over here. You must like a T Rex. <laughs> Actually, in high school, people used to call me T-Rex because I had big legs and tiny little arms. <laughs> oh, so that's why. That's why. Yep. And I just love dinosaurs. So that's the famous shot right there. So tell me about Taylor. Uh, what, what did Taylor have? Um, I've noticed that you mentioned Taylor um, on that post. Um, who is Taylor to you? Um, has she helped you in any certain way or anything like that? Uh, Taylor is one of my really good friends. I would consider her a best friend. She is an angel, honestly. Like, I mean, I have a, a good amount of people supporting me and stuff like that throughout the prep, being like on my really shitty days, being like, it's okay, today's a bad day, just like kind of fluff it off or whatever. But Taylor, literally, she was there for me so much, helped me so much, hyped me up when she didn't have to. And I mean, I did the same for her as well and everything like that, but she is an absolutely incredible person and someone in this industry that I really wish more women would be like. No, she is. She's really nice in person. I've met her a couple of times. Um, she's, she's really, really cool. I'm actually, actually reminded me since I brought it up. I have to, I have to reach back out to her. She wanted to do something. Um, 
Did she have any, um, like, was she an emotional type of support for you? Or did she get, did she give you any advice as well? Um, I know, I know just is your main coach. Uh, but how was, how was, how was this prep with all that? I mean, honestly, she was there emotionally, like just for anything that I needed, we would constantly like text back and forth and stuff like that. And just it like calming my nerves, um, when it comes to anything to do with like prepping and diet. I don't ever, and it's no offense to anyone else, but like, I don't like too many cooks in the kitchen. So I keep what I need to do and the opinions only to Justin, because that's my coach. And that's the person in charge of my diet and my workout. So if I start outsourcing and getting other opinions, he's not going to know. And then if something changes, he won't know how to change it. Not exactly. So you should always listen to the main person. Absolutely. Uh, how did you, uh, first of all, did you end up getting, um, like, how has your life shifted from amateur to pro as in like opportunity wise or anything like that? Have you seen a difference? Yeah. I mean, um, I've been doing a lot of traveling and I was still kind of prepping. So it's like, I didn't announce so many things, but I've had really great opportunities kind of thrown my way. Uh Even, um, when I was, I was supposed to do the Tampa pro, but I wound up not doing it. Um, even when I was there, I did two of my girlfriend's makeup, one of them being Taylor. And now I have people reaching out to me like, Hey, when I have my shows, can you travel? I'll pay for you to come travel and do my hair and makeup. So, I mean, it's opened up even business things for me, but like sponsors and stuff like that, like my factor supplements, I have known the guys there forever. They are three of the most amazing guys I've ever met. Uh, I know Tom and um the other owner a lot more tim sorry had a brain fart moment actually tom tim um, sorry but, tim tim yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, no no it's tom and tim oh tom and tim yes oh, okay, okay. and the other one is chris but i don't know chris as much as i know tom and tim um and they've been awesome throughout my whole entire bodybuilding career and now i'm one of their like sponsored athletes there so and if you want to shop anyone Use Shway 10 as your code. <laughs> there it is. There it is, guys. There it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> take I that mean, little opportunity right there. <laughs> I couldn't help it. It kind of just, um, I don't know. It's kind of almost, I've always been a very confident person, but I feel like my confidence is elevated. Okay. And my mindset has elevated. So it's like not even just professional things changing, but just personal things in general changing. Okay. I mean, that's good. That's good. Uh, I mean, and I think that that also reflects back to the hard work that you've done. You've noticed that and that's applied, pre- you know, a, a specific amount of pressure to you. Now with the pressure part, how are you, this is going to be a, a, a two part question. Okay. Number one, I don't know if you want to talk about it. Is there any reason why you uh, fell out of Tampa pro? That's number one. Number two. Okay. Number two. Do you feel any specific or type of pressure now going into your first pro debut? Okay. Those are actually amazing questions and I'll be wholeheartedly honest. Um, I kind of jumped the gun when I won my pro card and I had won it and I was already going to Tampa to begin with. I was going to visit my girlfriend, Jill, because she was competing that weekend. My friend Kim was competing that weekend and then Justin was going to be there. So I was like, I looked at him and I'm like, let's do Tampa. Like, let's do it. And he said, okay. And looking back, I kind of wish I'd had a talk with him before I just kind of gung ho made that decision because it was like a week and a half to two weeks out. My body was shot. Like it just, I was eating stuff and it was like, hold, I was holding water and my body just, in general, it just doesn't like to be lean. So I texted him and we had a whole conversation or whatever. <clears throat> and I said to him, I was like, I love bodybuilding. I would love to do my pro debut in Tampa, but I also am not dumb and I'm not going to start fucking up my hormones and I'm not going to screw up my body just to get on stage. Cause at the end of the day, the stage is always going to be there. But if I destroy my body, I, I don't know. I don't know how to come back from that. Health comes first. Absolutely. And it's a shame that some people in this industry, and you can hate me for saying this, some people in this industry put their competing before their health. 
there should be a time that you actually stop, take a break and notice that you're human, that if your organs aren't good, if your mindset isn't good, if your mental health isn't good, you are not going nowhere. You're going to drive yourself deeper into a hole that you're, you're going to wish you have a ladder big enough to climb right back out because you're not, it's, 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 it's tough. Absolutely. And you know, if it wasn't such a hard prep and my body wasn't being so stubborn, I might've been able to go into it a little bit easier, but it's like, you know, women in cortisol levels, like it just, you, you can't mess with that. Cause it's no, just exactly. going to punch you right back. No, exactly. <laughs> um, but okay. So for the second part of your question, honestly, I don't regret backing out of it. Cause now looking back, I want my pro debut to me be making noise. Okay. I don't, I don't, you know, and someone had said this and I saw they put up a story on Instagram or like a post or something. And it wasn't an attack on me. It just kind of crazy how it showed up where they're like, just because you turn pro doesn't mean you're ready for the pro stage. Okay. And now you, kind of, you kind of felt it was towards you or no? What? You kind of felt that was towards you? No, 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 no. Oh, I just okay. wanted to clarify, like whoever had posted this that had nothing to do with me. I didn't. I don't know why I would think that someone think that, but it just kind of really resonated with me. Like just because I got my pro card doesn't mean that I am okay to stand up with some of these yeah, women yeah. who've been doing pro shows for ten plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm glad that I didn't do it because going and looking at them, like, yeah, it would have been cool to be on stage and everything like that. But these women are incredible and they're amount of leanness and their muscle density. Like I want to look like that when I make my pro debut. No. And I, and I agree because you want to be looked at. Yeah. You want to be noticed. You don't want to be a type of person that just comes in there. Oh, she just got her pro card. Did the show. Let's say placed that last or whatever. And then the first impression is, oh, this girl's a pro, but she already placed last on her first show. Exactly. 100%. And, that, and, and that hits home man, when it comes to the way you kind of actually feel because I mean, look, let's be honest at the end of the day, people might say they don't care. I think what ends up happening because this is such a, uh, a judgmental sport that when people look at you, you, look, you're, you're pro now you're in a sense of baby in this, uh, uh, in this new, you know, league, right? Oh yeah. I'm the bottom of the barrel. Exactly. All over so again. whatever, even when you're up to the top, I mean, the people at the top are already say it as well. When people talk shit about you, you will see it. You will fucking see it. And it's depending what type of person you are. I think there's going to be a certain time that it'll get to you because people are like, yo, no, you're fucking amazing. You'll have this amount of people. He's saying, yo, she's amazing. She's amazing. She's going to win top five Olympia. And then this one is like, nah, she needs a lot more work. She needs this. So it's you start looking at all these messages like, oh my, you're mentally, I think it really fucks with you when, when you're still like when you're deep into the pro league or you're already into another show or two shows, three shows, four shows, because now you're going to be the talk. People are going to keep on talking about you and that's going to like, you know, it's going to kind of stir things up. So I don't know how you feel with that type of pressure, you know, like. Do you think you would be kind of devastated if you were to place like very low in your first show? I mean, uh, honestly, and I know everyone says this and doesn't mean it, but I don't really give a shit what people think about me. Hmm. I really don't. Cause the people who love me and support me and are there for me, yeah. those are the opinions that matter. Hmm. Not some troll on Instagram who's sitting behind, uh, computer attacking everyone and that's the, the people of- and that's the people that were yeah saying. but like why do i give a shit what you think because one you're just coming down on me and saying fucked up stuff to me yeah. because to make yourself feel better and even like people in the gym like if they were to come up to me and say something stupid like i'd be like what the hell but like at the end of the day i don't know you your opinion doesn't matter yeah. kind of thing um With that being said, though, I haven't really ever experienced the whole attack thing. So I really don't know how I would handle it. And it also depends on whether it's during prep or off season, because during prep, I might bite someone's head off if they do that. It'll probably be during (laughs) prep, something like that. Yeah. The fact that our fucking. Our mental behavior, the way we are, you know, the stuff that we're on, the depriving of depriving of food or anything like that, seeing stuff like that, like 
seeing pop-ups on your phone, like all these messages, like, yo, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good. I'm sure that to a certain extent, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Why are people attacking me like this? I mean, and big, yeah. big people say it all the time. These big pros are like, some people say, oh, I don't even look at my messages. I think that's a lie sometimes because if people didn't get attacked as much or negativity or even a positive thing, you, you can get a lot of positive reinforcement in a sense that, um, you know, you look amazing. So then now the expect, the, um, they expect you to be all the way up here, your first show. Yes. So then sometimes people de decide to deactivate their accounts. They don't want to deal with it. So I don't know if that's the, is that what competitors usually do you think, or like, have you ever been in a situation like that? And it's okay to do that. If you do feel that way. I mean, honestly, me, no, no, I've never been in the position where I've been like, oh, I need to deactivate Instagram because too many people are coming at me or it's messing with my head too much or whatever. Um, I don't know. I keep it. I mean, I kind of have to keep it up between sponsorships and like my job and stuff like That's that. Enough. But like I said, maybe four weeks out is when I'll start giving a shit me a little bit about yeah. what the people say, but your brain all isn't there. Your emotions are literally like this on a daily basis. Now, how are you with uh, you and Justin? Are you guys going to continue um, having another season together? Oh my God. I told Justin, you suck with me for life. Okay. He's literally, I'm not only his mate, Coach, he's one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, I wholeheartedly completely trust him in every aspect I possibly could between regular life and bodybuilding and everything in between. Like he, he can't get rid of me if he tried. <laughs> no, he seems, he seems like a very cool guy when I, uh, I've seen him in shows and stuff like that. Serious, but very cool guy. Um, yes. he knows his stuff. I mean, I've seen the oh, competitors yes. that he does as yourself. Um, so I don't know if you have the answer for this yet, but, um, when will it be your official pro debut? Uh, I want to tell you, sorry, guys, you guys can't know this part. <laughs> I want to tell you, I think, did I already tell you? All you told me was Tampa. Okay. Um, unless, unless you had mentioned your backyard, but I don't know. I, okay. So I want to tell you, but after me sitting there and like signing the contract and being all dramatic and putting on Instagram, I kind of don't want to put it out there until it's like an official thing with Justin. Cause it's one thing to be like, Oh, next year I'm totally going to do team you, or I'm sorry. I keep getting correct that it's universe now, not team you, but to to now put it out there that I'm doing these other shows and like, what if I'm not ready? Yeah. Or like, what if Justin thinks I need another year to grow? So it's like, I want to, but I no, feel like I kind of, to, you don't have to, I have no problem telling you once it's official. Guys, I'll find and... out for you guys and then I'll keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they're going to be like, yo, when is your show? I, I can't tell you that guys. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Um, are you an official uh, exclusive sponsor to someone? Um, I mean, I'm with Violet the Dress Code. Okay. I'm with um, who else? Mile I, Factor. I know they have some sort of exclusivity right, when it comes to clothing. Yes. Yeah, so like with Violet the Dress Code, I signed a contract and I cannot get coat. Like I can't. If I were to pose with another company, I can't tag them to get them more business. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, like, for instance, when we did that photo shoot together, like, Probably, I yeah. had no problem doing that. I just couldn't tag him in order to get him more business because that'd be in breach of my contract. Gotcha. So, realistically, you could still, you could still shoot with something. You just can't promote. Uh, yes, exactly. I can't put it up and... Well, I mean, that's cool too. They're giving you a sense still opportunity to do other stuff elsewhere. You just can't do the promoting factor of it. Oh yeah. And I mean, Chris Zimmerman and Elena, his girlfriend have been absolute like angels throughout my whole entire time of working with them. So I would never do something to ever yeah, no, take. No, they're, I, they, I think, uh, I think I was talking to Chris. He's, he's awesome. 
Um, oh, I love him. He's really, really cool. Um, I do want to get something together. I, I had told him I was trying to get the permit for the beach. I was trying to do a beach shoot. Um, but they oh. never got the, the county never got back to me. So it's like, I'm like, oh, now I'm like out of time because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do things at a specific day. I know people going back to school and getting, you know, stuff like that ready. But so I'm like, damn it. Now I'm going to have to probably do it at the gym. I probably at the den or whatever. Um, but I want to do it with a backdrop with a whole like, okay. Yeah. I, I have a red one. I have this really nice red one, but it's huge. So I don't know if I'm gonna, it's going to fit in my car. So to like drive over there with it is gonna like stick out of like the uh, cr like across the whole car. I think it's longer than the car. Oh shit! It's gonna have to go out of the window. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> fuck. I don't know, but um, I'm trying to plan that out. I do want to talk to Chris about it. Um, because I did make a video about I am doing a. So I want to get ready for uh, kind of getting to the whole model aspect of like shooting. Like I, we spoke about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I don't want to just do like regular gym stuff anymore i mean i i still do but it's like i, I want to do um i want to do like some some dope ass like you know like model stuff like these super nice high heels or uh if, if you look good and you want it you know you want to dress in it like how they doing photo shoots um and it, you know maybe swimsuit collection or anything like that but i want to plan that um and i'm trying to do that at the end of august but i don't know yet we're even early september uh because it's still hot out and stuff but I mean, who knows, but I've been talking to Chris about it and uh, he's like, yeah, let me know, whatever. So um, I'm trying to plan a date. It's just hard. Well, yeah, because I mean, you got the models and then you have to coordinate with like whatever permits you get and then Chris's schedule and then your schedule. It's, it's, it's hard. The whole permit yeah. thing alone was like for them to get back to me, I was calling them and then the guy was on vacation. I'm like, oh, my God, this is fucking horrendous. <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, um, so how, you're in off season right now. What? You're in off season? Yeah, still reversing because technically I didn't didn't go into off season after universe. So still reversing now, but I mean feeling amazing. Okay. Any uh any personal things that you're getting ready for or no? What do you mean? Um not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, but look guy, at your guys, click. guys, you can't find out still <laughs> I'm trying to get out of her kind of, but she's not ready. Um, let's see. I can't talk about that one. Um, and how's it been? So how's it been with, uh, in general with, with, uh, like the, the hair business, is it something that you're also exploring even more to do? Like, like now you're going to create like a, in a sense, like because your IFB pro status and I'm getting out there even more. Are you going to kind of take that as a, as a, if some, if people say, yo, are you able to travel all the time? Is that something you can, you, you would consider to do or no? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I, in general, love to travel. Um, I am single, so it's nothing holding me down or anything like that, but I would have no problem. I mean, I would even love to like join the pro tan team where like they're traveling every like different uh, shows. That must be and wild. Then, Oh my God. I like that would honestly be a dream of mine, either doing pro tan or starting my own thing, like my own LLC where I'm traveling. Cause at the end of the day, I love doing color, but I love doing makeup. Absolutely love it. Like and that could be in the same field with bodybuilding. Uh, you would be in heaven. Oh my God. It'd be amazing. I would do the shows, go work out. Like I wouldn't revolve. That's awesome. Yeah. And most of it would be working on the weekends. So in the weekdays, I could do whatever the hell have I want. You, have <laughs> you thought about promoting that? I need to get my ducks in a row first when it comes to that. Like, I need to build more relationships in order for this to go off the ground and not, I'm not saying that it would crash and burn, but I'm not dumb when it comes to, you need to walk before you run. Yeah. So like go to the shows, build these relationships, meet more people, make sure I have a baseline of clients that want to pay me to travel to where they are in order for me to then start to elevate other parts of my yeah. business and professional yeah. life. I would say now, to be honest, like, I mean, from, from what I, what I've learned as well, I've utilized a lot of my off season to 
connect with more people and stuff like that, I would say the same thing for you. You know, utilize this whole year. I'm not sure if you're going to have the whole year for an off season, but um, as in next year, trying to do something for the, for the fall or something like that. But I would say utilize that whole year while you're not in prep or before you get into serious prep and try to create a lot of connection. So then, because let's, let's be honest, once you're in prep, that's when you start getting even more uh, traffic with, People yeah. finding out who you are. And now that you're not an amateur anymore, you're not a BB pro, you ha- you'll have even more traffic. Because now it's like, oh, she's getting ready for a show, which show, which show, and then you're gonna be the talk and this and that. Remember, now you're in the now you're in a league that you win a show, you start getting talked about with Tur- uh, Turek, um, uh, Olympia TV, you know, shit like that. You get your ticket. I don't know if that was always been your dream to go to Olympia, but tell me about that. What's what's your end goal? Cause we, we're about to wrap it up, but what's your end goal of this whole fitness journey now that you got your pro card? I mean, I love it and I want to continue to do it, but I would love to do the Arnold and I would love to be able to grace the stage of the Olympia at least once. If I could do it more than once, that'd be absolutely amazing. But just once to experience, cause it's like, you know, that rush when you get on stage, that absolute rush of excitement, I'm getting the chills thinking about it, but I can't imagine what like, what these people, like Lori or Sean or, I mean, anyone that steps on stage that rush when you on the Olympia stage, because that is the top of the top. You know, it's crazy. You, you're telling me this, and I can literally picture all of us going to Ohio next year and going to the fucking Arnold. That is honestly, if I were to be invited to go to the Arnold, that would be a dream. Like... Even awesome. just doing that. Awesome. I can't even imagine once you get your ticket to the Olympia. That must be so fucking crazy. I can't even imagine either. It's something, I mean, obviously some of these pros are so used to it because they've been doing it, what, vitamin C is seven years now. Sean's been doing this forever. Lorley, uh, she's been doing it forever. But like that first initial time I was signing the contract, it's probably the most incredible point of someone's life. Oh, I get it. Which hey, some might look at and say it's sad and pathetic, but that is you're working towards something. Yeah, you. I mean, you are. If you're working towards something, you don't get nowhere. That's a different story. Yeah. But you're 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 putting in work. You're still doing your normal duties, how you do it every day. You know your job, and you're trying to build every a lot more from that. And then from there, you're kind of building these new new type of avenues of of just getting your name out there even more. So. And then with your pro status, like I tell people all the time, you do not, this is just to wrap it up. You do not make money in bodybuilding. It's how you make money promoting yourself and using yourself wisely to, to get that pro status and then doing something with it. Absolutely. So that's what you do. But Shwe, it was nice having you. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for being on the show again. I really appreciate it. I know you got a busy Sunday. You're probably going to go lift in a bit. Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, guys, if you have not checked it out, the Undeniable Podcast on YouTube, on IG, uh, follow Shwe. I'm going to actually tag her on the actual post once we do it later. And uh, I'm going to try to get you back on as well with the other IB pros. Lately, I've been having IB pros back and forth. So um, I'm excited for that. But thank you for your time. Awesome. Well, thank you. Of course. And we'll talk. Bye. Bye.